Today, we are talking about sous vide chicken breast. I'm Ralph, welcome to my kitchen. Let's get started. I am fairly new to sous vide cooking myself, so I'm not an expert on this by any means. So basically, that means that if I can do it and I can pull this off, so can you. Now, one thing that you have to bear in mind is people have this in their head that for a chicken to be safe, it has to be cooked to an internal temperature of 165 degrees. Not true. Sous vide, we are going to be cooking it at a much lower temperature. Today, I'm going to be cooking at 150 degrees. You could even cook this at, say, 142, especially if you wanted for the chicken to be going on top of a salad and you want something really nice, soft, moist, juicy. Now, at 150, it's still going to be nice and moist, soft and juicy, just not quite as soft. It's going to be a little bit more like what you traditionally think of for a chicken breast, only if you've been cooking it the traditional way, probably not as dry and not as chewy. It's certainly not going to be as dry. The difference is why you don't have to cook it to 165 degrees internal temperature is because according to the USDA and FDA, it's not about temperature, it's about temperature and time. So because we're going to be having it in the sous vide water for about an hour and a half to two hours, I'm going to be doing these for two hours today, it's the internal temperature of 150 degrees over that time period, it's going to be thoroughly cooked, fully pasteurized, no need to worry about any kind of salmonella or any other kind of funk out there. So. This is going to be safe, and it's going to be producing a juicier, safe chicken breast. Now, there's a couple of different ways. I've already put one into a vacuum-sealed bag, but you might not have a, a vacuum sealer, although it's a great product to have, even if you don't use it for sous vide, because it does take all the air out of the, the bag, and so if just all you're doing is freezing the food, it'll keep a lot better, longer, and without all those little ice crystals in it. But I've got one that's already done that, but what if you don't have that? You can also use a freezer, you know, lock bag. That's what we're going to do today. Some people might say, Ralph, there's plastic involved here, and they've been talking a lot about these microplastics. Personally, I'm not too concerned about it. I've made it up to, you know, 70 years old, and I think I've had a pretty good life. But if you're concerned about it, there are also silicone bags that you can purchase. I have seen them at uh, Target. They probably have them at Walmart, too, that you won't have that same issue with. And they're reusable. Now, you'll notice how I've kind of folded over the top of this bag. I'm doing that because chicken can carry all kinds of funky diseases on the, the surface. And so I want to protect, you know, the surface of the bag. To that, I'm going to be adding some kosher salt. I'm going to flavor this with some lemon and pepper, just because I know my wife likes that. And folding it back over. And here's how we go about getting the air out of the bag. Now I'll get this out of our way so we can see it. But take the bag, zip it shut most of the way. Make sure it's a good tight seal. But you have a little bit left here at the end. Put the bag into the water, put it down. Even, it's okay to put this corner in because you've already sealed that corner up and you're getting it right down to the part that's left open. And now, finish the sealing process. And when you're done, you can see all the air pretty much has been taken out of that bag. It's pretty well vacuum sealed. Now I'm going to slip our sous vide unit in here. I'm going to be setting this to a 150 degrees today. There we are at 150. Start. Now, these bags are staying in and fully submerged 
quite nicely. If they don't, you might have to do things like some people will take a, a clothes clamp and, and hanger and put, not a hanger, but you know, the, the clothes clip, like a laundry clip, and do that on the side. Or I've kind of found these magnets. Now they're from my garage, but they were in the original packaging, and you can kind of put that in the water and lock it in. But I'm not going to have to do that for these because it looks like they're going to be quite nice and submerged on their own. Now, some people will use a stock pot for these. This was not a pot specifically designed for sous vide. I went to a restaurant supply and bought this storage container, really, and a lid that I cut out to fit around the, uh, the unit itself. The time has started. My water temperature currently is about 108 degrees, and that's because I used the hot water tap to get it started. It's gonna take a little while to get it up to temperature here. And it's okay to put the chicken in before it comes up to temperature. But if you wanna be kind of fussy about the time, go ahead, wait. It won't take very long for it to get up to the prescribed temperature. Drop your chicken in. And now you are free to go about your business for about the next hour and a half to two hours. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and wait two hours. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with my time. I might go watch TV. I might run some errands, who knows, but I will see you in about two hours. Okay, we're back. First, let's take a look at what these chicken fillets look like. The first one here, this is the one that was in the Food Saver vacuum sealed bag. This is the one from our little homemade Ziploc bag. Basically, it looked pretty much the same. This one kind of got curled up a little bit. That's kind of the difference in size, but otherwise they pretty much look alike. I'm going to taste them in this step because while they may not look totally appetizing at this point, uh, because there's not a whole lot of color to them, they're still done inside. So let me just kind of prove that fact here to us. Let's see. Oh yeah. You can see all the, the juices starting to run in there. I guess Gunner wants some too, so I'm going to have to break him off a little something something. Come here, Gunner. Come here, bud. Okay, I got to move this because if, if the people don't see it, they don't believe it. Here you go. It's totally done. Very juicy. I'm just going to break off a little piece here. I think Gunner's going to want a little piece of this too, probably. Here you go, bud. Yeah, I'm thinking he's liking both. And I'm picking up on the, the seasoning in the second one with that lemon pepper. Now, like I say, the color is not that great. So I'm going to take this one more step farther. I'm going to take these over to the cooktop, put a little bit of a sear on them, and we'll see what that looks like. So join me over there. Okay, now, I am using a cooktop that has little griddle marks on it, so it's going to look a little bit like they've been grilled outside. But it doesn't have to. I'm just trying to not have it, you know, have just that plain white color. We're not going to be grilling these for very long. Just enough to put a little bit of color on them. And Gunner is misbehaving, so please forgive him. My wife is not here to take him up to the media room. to add a little avocado oil to the other side as well. Okay, I'm going to flip them over and do them for about a minute on the other side as well. I think it's looking better already with those, those little sear marks on there. Now these would be perfect as a main entree. They'd be 
perfect if you wanted to slice them up or cube them and put them into a salad. Also be great if you wanted to kind of cut them up thin, put them into chicken tacos. And that's it. I'm going to call that done. Now they look complete. Take a closer look at them here. Got some grill marks showing. Now they have a little bit of color to them. Make for a great main entree. Serve it with maybe some rice, some uh, broccoli, some green beans, anything that suits your fancy. This is gonna be a terrific meal. And it was so simple, most of the time I was able to do something else. So if you liked the video, hit the like button down below. Oh, one last thing, that sous vide does create a lot of heat, especially in the countertop. So if you don't have heat safe countertops, you are gonna to wanna to be using some sort of a, a trivet on there or a, a towel or something that's gonna be absorbing the heat because it will get hot. With that said, give me a like down below maybe, consider a subscription, and I love your comments. That said, I will catch y'all next week. Bye-bye.